Good morning and welcome to the Nova Show. I'm your host, Chris Nova. Welcome to the show. Here at the Nova Show, we do what I want when I want because it's my fucking show. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Good to see everyone. I'm like yelling into the microphone because I have a puppy in my lap and he has a bow tie. You all see his, he's got a bow tie. I started calling him Roger. I'm like, oh, God damn it, Roger. You just you look so, <laughs> you look so dapper these days. Anyway, hello everyone. Welcome to the Nova Show. I'm your host, Chris Nova. Welcome to the show. Here at the Nova Show, we do what I want when I want because it's my fucking show. Today on the Nova Show, we're looking at K probes and rust. And we're also just enjoying our Sunday vibes. We're going to be chilling. We're going to be chilling. How's everybody doing? How are all of you doing? Show of hands, who out here in the audience? Who in our studio audience? We have a studio audience. There's. Maybe 10 or 15 folks listening right now. Who out there in the audience um, was impacted by the Silicon Valley bank closure on Friday? It's okay if you want to talk about it. It's okay if you don't want to talk about it. Um, I myself, I was impacted. All of my investments are fucked. Well, they're not, they're not fucked, but they're in a state of unknown. And all of the startups that I have invested in are certainly um, in a very interesting, precarious situation. So anyway, if anybody wants to talk about it, I'm here. If you want, uh, I cannot offer legal advice. I'm not a lawyer. I encourage you all to seek legal counsel. However, I do have a Discord channel of other people who are also struggling um, and at the very least, you can you can have a friend to talk to. And one of the most useful things I've found in my career, and I talk about this in my book, Hacking Capitalism, one of the most useful things I've found is just talking with folks who can give you ideas. They may have heard something, they may have thought of something, they may have gotten a recommendation from somebody else, a suggestion, and there's going to be a key word or a thought or an idea or a pattern or a name that you're going to hear that you wouldn't have heard otherwise and it's gonna it's gonna open up another door for you to go walk down and explore it's like hacking you know, you're always looking for little teeny tiny things that just seem unusual and then you go and you explore them further and see what you can find right that's how this world works you have to you have to have a hacker's mindset if you want to survive anyway today we're going to be writing rust I have some exciting updates and um, we're going to try to get our music situation dialed in a little bit more as well. So thank you for the follow, everyone. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate you all coming in. We're going to cue the music out a little bit. We're going to reload my music on my end and bring it back with a little bit more energy, a little more gusto, a little more liveliness. See if we can get some, some nice jams going today. So who's ready for... Who's ready for some jams and to write some rust? Because we're gonna go, we're gonna go into it pretty deep today. We're gonna jump right into K probes. We're going straight into it. We're going right into it. All right, let's do this. So today on the Nova Show, we're gonna be looking at K probes and rust. Who here likes rust? I hope you like rust because I do. We have the Linux kernel source code pulled up in front of us. This is not Rust. We're actually looking at C, a pirate's favorite programming language, the C. So anyway, let's get some uh, let's get some things pulled up here on my computer, and we'll start taking a look at it. So we had a lot of of resources pulled up yesterday. I'm gonna keep all of these open, and we're gonna get some of these. Closed. We're going to remove Snoop Kit. 
we change the name where I'm in the Linux kernel source tree here you know it's going to be a day when you're in the Linux kernel source tree all right so we're going to get out of root and it looks like we have two shells opened up let's get some of these brave um linux accept cues.net ask you for we can close all of them. close awesome so we are going oh excuse me we are going to be looking at these accept cues in linux again and i have some exciting news for everyone as of yesterday um if you want to go learn a little bit more about what we're working on we are live chrisnova.net is now online chrisnova.net is now online and if you come here to this first post you have one from march 10th you can click on this one this is specifically we're going to be doing some work today so this post isn't done but this section down here at the very very end do you see these there's these to do's there's one there we're going to finish writing our blog post with the work we do today. So if you want to just catch up on where we are, not only is my blog beautiful, it looks fun. It's going to tell you everything we're working on today. And it's going to start at the very, very tippy top. It brings you in from 3000 feet. You know, all complex systems can, and in my opinion, should be modeled and reasoned about as a collection of cues, caches, connections, and workers. Think about that for a second. Everything you do in computers, Everything you do in computers, whether you're building a, a web API or you're breaking into a bank or you're you're dealing with large platform infrastructure, or large production web services or whatever you're dealing with, doesn't matter. All complex systems can and in my opinion should be modeled and reasoned about as a collection of queues, caches, connections and workers. These are the primary colors of computer science. Queues, caches, connections and workers. That's it the four basic building blocks of how you can model any system. And here in our example, we have a queue, we have connections, and we have a set of one or more workers over here on the other side of these accept statements. And you can see that the request will queue here. So anyway, we're gonna be trying to get more information specifically about this queue, known as the Linux accept queue. And the Linux accept queue is a, a queue of connections that can occur at runtime based off of the implementation detail of your web server. So if you're running Nginx or Apache or, you know, a Python server or a Ruby server, um, there's going to be some detail in the source code that's going to have like a strategy that tells you the relationship between when your code calls listen and when your code calls accept. And depending on this relationship and, you know, do you put it in a loop? Do you do concurrency? What exactly is your model um, will depend on how quickly you, you can pull connections off of the queue that occurs after somebody uh, connects to your server and nobody has accepted it. OK, so that queue is right here. And in some cases, that queue can get very, it can build. It can get very big and that's OK. Um, and we'll see that we talk about this backlog queue here in Nginx specifically, and we talk about the problems that occur when it starts to grow. And then we, we talk about performance and, and why you would not want to see this in your, your web service. And then we're going to talk about everybody's favorite thing is like, okay, I'm convinced these queues are bad. How the fuck do I see them? Which that's what we're doing today with K-Probes. We're going to try to see them. We're going to try. I don't know if we'll be able to, but we're going to, we're certainly going to try. Okay. So what we have here is we have a new repo that I started yesterday called Q. Uh, get clone, get at github.com, chrisnova slash Q. It's just the letter Q dot get. If you want to follow along, feel free to check it out with me and follow along. I am very notorious at typos and forgetting things. Uh, and so if you notice I, I misspelled something or forgot to include some language or, you know, you think it could be improved because I made a, a careless error, I strongly encourage all of you to just make a commit and, and open up a pull request right here, right here live on the show. Just go for it. Just don't even say anything. Just open up a PR. I promise you I'll smash merge in two seconds. So anyway, welcome to the show, everyone. Welcome in. Thank you for the follows, everyone. And if you're you're new to the show, feel free to say hi in the chat. 
just say just drop a quick message and be like yo i'm new to the nova pants show and i promise we have really cool people here They're like seriously we have really cool people who hang out in the show um and i promise you will you will find more uh, more folks and friends here than you you probably are expecting probably people you've heard of before to be completely honest there's a, there's a good crew here there's a good crew all right so let's see vancouver says actually i should probably just go tell people hi really quick before we we get too far into the rest um so why don't i tell people hi why i switch out of the linux source code in my ide over to our new uh q source code so let's see who we have here so we have all kinds of people. Vancouver is here, 39DK, um, Ascertainment, Xdas, Jabubab, Based Plant, good to see you. Give another type of um, Assertion Bit. Ooh, that's a good name. Uh, Julie4XPi. I suspect I know which Julie4XPi that is, but just in case. If you're new, welcome in. Flying Fish, fuck yes. Flying Fish, question question i have a question for you flying fish let me know whenever you are um you're hopped into the chat because i have a question for you flying fish if you're still here i have a question beholder hello so san gannett i love you gannett it's good to see you gannett gannett thank you for everything you do gannett you're amazing i'm happy to see you here gannett uh let's see avalanche pointer I have a question for you too, Avalanche Pointer. Do you do Avalanche Rescue? I do Avalanche Rescue. Give another type of. Do you have any thoughts on Ziggling? I, I I don't know anything about Ziggling. I have no opinions. Share a link and I'll go check it out. Um, Oscar Gallup says, sorry to hear all of that. Could you please summarize the bit of the situation in Silicon Valley? Um, basically, there's a very key bank in Silicon Valley that closed on Friday. And due to some legal and financial pressure, um, the bank is in a really precarious situation and most people who use the bank to store their money are unsure when and how they're going to get their money back out. The good news is it's almost guaranteed that everybody will get their money at some point. The question is when and, and how many fucking parts of their lives will be broken until they can get their money back, which means like most people who work at startups probably aren't going to get a paycheck next week. Most startups in Silicon Valley probably aren't going to get a paycheck next week unless you uh, are with one of those startups that have like really strong investors that can help you out or they're taking the $250,000 route. Like there's still ways to make it happen, but like business leaders are having to make all kinds of difficult decisions and work with people and 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 we're, we're, nobody really knows what's going to happen or how it's going to play out. It's it is a probably like as scary and as unknown as like when people started to get like the first like lockdown notices during COVID, like people just don't understand what's going to happen, right? Nobody here is a financial banking expert. None of us have had a non-FDIC insured bank shut down in the 2020s before, right? Like this is all very new to the whole world. Um, so anyway, uh, still haven't looked in Rust how the kernel works. Sharper guy is here. Flying Fish says, haha, I'm here. I'm just wondering. Okay, so I was just wondering, Flying Fish, if you have read the book. Xdas is here. Blue Reader says, being sold today. Yes, so it's gonna get sold to someone for probably pennies on the dollar. There's there's so much money gonna be traded here. What's what's fascinating is somebody's gonna get rich off of this. Um, somebody's gonna get rich, somebody's gonna lose a bunch of money, and it's just it's gonna be crazy. Like, if, if somebody could do a report where where they said, like, of all the people who were one degree associated with the bank, show how much money each person made and each person lost, you would just see, like, the whole thing just kind of go from, like, this to, like, this. Like, it would just be so weird. Just, like, such an obscure graph. CEOs will go bankrupt and other CEOs will become billionaires and be on the cover of Forbes. Like, it's it's totally a thing. Like, it's so weird. Money is just, it's just fascinating. Um, uh, or you're one of the startups who got a call from someone with insider info. So I don't have any insider info. Everything I know is publicly available. I will say, though, that, like, I'm in, I do angel investing and I just, like, am generally, like, I love the startup scene. 
I'm a huge advocate for the startup scene. I, I strongly disagree with some of the way the funding has been managed, but like in general, I love startups. I love the idea of humans building things. I'm more on the building side of it than I am on the money side of it, if that makes sense. Agdafish says, over a megabyte of large generated source file in the repo feels like my undergrad thesis. Beautiful. Hopefully you're talking about the kernel. So anyway, we have this repo called Q, and it's a small static Rust binary which can be used to serve as kernel queuing and latency metrics. And I was working on this late last night. And so we have the we have a couple of things here. We have our eBPF code, which is here in eBPF. We have our shared code, which is basically like our common like um, our common code that is shared between eBPF and uh, Q. And we're, we'll actually, there's nothing in here right now, but this is gonna be like a header file that we'll share between multiple directories. And then we have Q, which is our little runtime. Um, so it's it started here and it works. And, and I mean, of course there's, there's so much, like so many things we could do to this if we wanted to like dig into it. And, and we've already done a lot of this in Aura. So if you want a, a really like strong production quality um, version of what we're doing here, I would encourage you to go look at Aura. Um, and you can see that we also have like an eBPF directory here. And these are like, these are like much higher quality for, for folks to, um, to actually use. Um, so anyway, so uh, the ones we're working on are, are pretty much just like prototype, if that makes sense. Okay, let's see. Oscar Galdrop says, this might be a silly question, but what do you use to gen the models in the blog post? They look very nice and, and they are plain text. That is a great question. So if you go to chrisnova.net, you can also go to github.com. Check this out. chrisnova.net. The name of the repo is just .net, not to be confused with like .net. But if you go here, see how it just says chrisnova.net? Um, uh, you go to content and you can go to posts and this is the source code of the blog. Hey Jay, how's it going? I was just showing off your great eBPF code. And so here, this, this is just like, if you look at the like raw code, um, you can see that it uses this little goat doc block, but these are, this is just like a, it's an ASCII diagram. And then this, you can look at, there's like these arrows and this FIFO queue. That is yielded, that's just printed out here. And then that's how I get my diagrams. So you can actually just read the plain text, right? It actually looks, oh, it looks like there's a small error there, but it, it just looks pretty to read. And, um, and it, this is what it looks like when it's rendered. Um, and then to do my ASCII diagrams, I use ASCII flow, which if y'all aren't using ASCII flow, you should stop what you're doing and go use ASCII flow because I was showing this a little bit yesterday. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with ASCII flow. You can come in, you can do all kinds of things here and you can draw uh, arrows and you can connect the dots and you can do all kinds of things with ASCII flow. And then when you get done, you can just copy this and paste it into wherever you want to go. There you go. And so I draw my little diagrams in ASCII flow and I just get them here in into my thing. And if you go to the actually if you go to the GitHub goat, um, ASCII flow barely scratches the surface of all the different things that you can do with goat. So goat allows you to do like curved lines and you know circles and squares and it gives you all these examples of like like here's a good one here's like the the everything diagram and you can do diagonal lines round lines interiors you can do like through line there's all kinds of stuff there's all kinds of stuff um so anyway you can you can see there's data flow and there, there's a lot of stuff here so this is blampe goat is the name of the the thing that i use render ascii di diagrams is svg diagrams Let's give that one a star oh cool 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 so that's the blog so anyway 
So we have this queue program. And so right now it basically just says queue and we have an empty eBPF program. And so I was getting into some problems yesterday and we're going to get into this. So I have everything commented out here because we were running into some symbol problems. So let's start off by just kind of showing where where the code is and then we can make a change and we'll we'll start to go from there. OK, so what I can do here is I go to Q and I should be able to just run uh, make eBPF install. Um, I a tool is not found. So let's do, let's make sure I have I a tool. Using I a tool. There is this. And there we go. And I even think I have that in the make file. Just comment it out. Here, eBPF. I think it's in this one. I think it's just, yeah, it's just right here. It's commented out, you know, to do add a check. Cool. So there's that. And so we'll get by a tool running. So now I should be able to build the code and let's see what we have this time. Uh, bind gen failed, no such file or directory. Um, let's see what my bind gen looks like. So eBPF make file source. Um, make eBPF. There we go. Um, I think it's because I'm not seeding into eBPF. CD eBPF and make compile, right? So we go into the eBPF directory. <clears throat> and then we do, we have binding.rs, which is here. Does this not work? Let's see. Binding failed. So IA tool is not working. Um, let's, let's figure out why Aya tool isn't working. Doo -doo. Is bind gen, there it is, bind gen isn't found, that's why. I was like, something feels wrong. Okay, so we'll do this one. So we found yesterday in the kernel where we want to instrument, which is cool. And then, so who here is familiar with Q theory, queuing theory? One of the, the open questions I have is what's the right way to observe a queue just in general? So do we, cause we, we can instrument the kernel when we add a element to the queue. We can instrument the kernel when we pop an element off the queue, or we can instrument the kernel in both places. And there's trade off. If you think about it, there's trade offs to both, right? Like, and and so, and if you do both, then there's like, then you have a very noisy signal. So it's like, where do we want to instrument the kernel when we add a connection to the queue, or when we're removing them, or both? Or is there another place in the kernel we could find a better place? Maybe there's like a a, a some sort of perf. Um, plumbing that we could hook into that would you know you you would be able to give it like a frequency and it would just like check like a certain amount of times per second or something i don't know we'll have to look and see okay so let's try this now make ebpf and there we go
Let's try this again. There we go. And so we're compiling our BPF with warnings, which is fine. And so now we should be able to do make eBPF install. And that should, so this should do everything. It'll compile our eBPF probe and then it will embed the probe into uh, the Q command line tool. And then we can just run Q. And then we can just run Q. And we run Q as root because we're going to be calling the load BPF system call. Um, and that is how we load our eBPF program. We don't have to look it up at runtime because this is not production code. So fuck licenses because this is just prototype code. I included the licenses in the repo, which is good enough for government work. Okay, cool. Sounds good. So there is that. So there's make eBPF install and then sudo q. And there you go. And there's our there's our code. So we're we've here's what we've done. So q is running. So if we look at the q code base, um we've got this print line right here. So this is the command line. This is the user space. And so we've basically we've embedded our probe which is called q probe directly into our code. And we've called Q and we've basically loaded and attached to the TCP connect. So we're going to change this, but we're not going to change it right now. So then we have our eBPF probe, which is here and currently is using none of these IA tool bindings. I had to comment out these bindings. Okay. And we're going to slowly, I mean, slowly start introducing some of the example code here and see where things start to fall apart. So first things first, we're going to just, we're just going to include, we're just going to bring both of those into our, um, into our code. And we're going to, we're just going to do this line here. And we will we'll just very, very quickly try to just use some basic code from the bindings. So these are so for those of you who don't know, we have this binding RS file that this is this is like this is huge. It's an enormous file. These are the Linux kernel task struct bindings. In other words, Every function in the kernel has some bindings here in Rust that we can reference. The fact that this was auto-generated is just, this is the, we are, where we're going, we don't need fucking people. This is huge for computer science because I'm about to be out of a job. <laughs> we can auto-generate kernel bindings now. Um, I mean, we've been able to do it for a while, but now with chat gpt it's going to be it's yeah anyway i digress this is going to be um an interesting decade for sure cool so what we have here is we're going to go into ebpf um we're going to go into main and so all we're doing is we're just declaring address family inet and address family inet 6 these are two commonly known uh, values in the kernel. We I have not validated these, um, so we can go and look them up. I have no reason to believe they're wrong. Um, and then, of course, I added my little license header here. Shout out to Jay for helping me get this. And so, anyway, um, I don't know why it's not finding binding, but that's okay. So we basically call eBPF. We have a probe context. We do try eBPF, we get our probe context, and we return an unsigned 32 and an int64. Um, and then we basically try to just cast um, arg0 of the context um, to our socket file descriptor. And then we just turn, okay. And this sock is, if you remember, we're basically bringing it in from binding. So this is, this is a kernel task struck sock. So this is specific to the TCP um, connect base point here. And so we can we can actually cast this for a few things. But anyway, I digress. So um, we're going to try to rebuild this. So we're going to do make eBPF install and sudo and we'll pass our environment along with it.
And let's actually go to here. So this is our eBPF make file. Why don't I actually just do this? And now this should speed up my, this should speed it up. Yeah, quite a bit. Okay, so now we're not gonna be generating the bindings every time I try to compile. Now we're just going to be compiling. It'll still be slow as molasses, but that's okay. But that's okay. What will happen this decade because of ChatGPT in your opinion? I mean, so like, look at this, look at the signs, right? Like everybody is freaking out about OpenAI right now. Chat, BG, chat GPT and all of the, the AI stuff is like coming along really well. Um, you know, it's useful, it's scary. It's, it, it's totally like a thing that has folks' attention. People are seeing it. The Silicon Valley bank just crashed. The tech industry is going to be looking for our next big thing to go hyper focus on. Obviously, it's going to be AI. It's not going to be fucking crypto. The fucking Donald Trump of fucking tech disciplines. No, like I'm good on that. <laughs> like that fucking political fucking shit show. Like I'm, I'm good. Open AI actually is like a retributable, um, not the company, but like, like just open artificial intelligence or machine learning or any of the computer science that comes along with it is actually a retributable discipline right like it's it's a real it's real science it's not just like funny money and so um i suspect myself and many other people are going to find ourselves working there in the next decade that's really what what i mean funny calling cargo from a make file um this is something i do if you don't like it don't run my fucking code sorry don't sorry anyway so our code is running now which is good so let's keep let's keep moving along shall we um not complaining no you're cool you're cool you're cool don't worry about it <clears throat> so let's keep going so we'll now try to so basically we get our socket um from this and then we basically say let socket common is equal to bpf probe read kernel so this bpf probe read kernel comes from libbpf which where did we oh bpf helpers right here okay cool so I'm used to calling this exact function in C. It's just very strange to see this in Rust. Aya BPF did a really good job. Um, and I think the reason I like it is because if you come from C, it's very intuitive. Thank you, Jay, for suggesting suggesting Aya BPF. I am growing fond of this this package already. I I only know how to, I've only ever done this in C, so like this is this is all very new for me to be doing it in Rust. Um, okay, so we we say socket common. <clears throat> we read this is strange. The socket socket common as a const sock common, which we pull from here. And then we map the error or return. Okay. So now we have a common socket here. Or at least we hope we do. <clears throat> and then we do a match where it's either at AF. Um, AF inet or AF inet six. So let's let's actually this is this is not very scary code. So let's let's do this. Let's get rid of this info, and we'll get rid of this info. And so now. Jay, do you know how to print K in our probe? I guess that's what this info does. It's basically a print K. BPF print K. Let's run this and see what we get. Let's run this and see what we get. We'll let the warnings yell at us. Um, hi, strange question. Do you have, do you know math or something that related to computer science? Um, yes. Uh, well, okay. So my wife is better at math than I am. I'm, I suck at math. Y'all want to see the math that I do? I don't do good math. Um, <clears throat> where's my, where's my blog? Um, so I, what is it? Chrisnova.net. Um, there's, I tried really hard to do math here. I tried really hard to do, but it's just a summation. 
I can't do calculus. Well, I mean, I can do calculus, but like, I, I fucking hate math. Like, <laughs> um, I, I, I use it at work sometimes, but like, I don't, there, there's, there's people out there who are way like next level better at math than me. Um, and they can like, they can go walk up to an algorithm I've been working on for weeks and they'll just like mock it up on the dry erase board with a couple of like weird, obscure Latin characters. I have no idea what they mean. And they're like, oh yeah, it's just a simple like range diffusion. And, and I'm like, I don't even know what those words mean. Right? Like it's so I'm not very good at math. I'll be honest. Um, I think automation and ML pushes our society to another crossroads with the logical ends of being inner techno feudalism or fully automated luxury com communism. Yeah, it's and I hate to tell you, but it's going to be techno feudalism unless I can stop it. Um, I luxury communism sounds pretty nice, though. I like the, I really like the way you put that base plant. OK, so that worked. So off to a good start let's get these let's get these in here maybe this is where our code was was erroring in which case i'm actually okay with a small error so let's see what we have here so i was getting some symbol errors let's see if we can't do this again oh sorry 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 um we're getting some symbol errors which if we're trying to bpf print k we might be we might be getting some this might be where our errors are coming from it's crypto code. It's Slater. You guys remember that show, Saved by the Bell? Slater. Somebody randomly created a PR in .NET repo. Let's go see. I told them to do it. It's probably you who said that, Oscar. Let's go see pull requests. Update Linux accept queues. Yeah, see. <laughs> so Max Con, the get request to query the stub module itself. Um, what did... Oh, you fixed the, the things. Yeah, fuck yeah. Approve. I was like reading the text. I was like, hold on. So Mexcon, this is a big one to change. There you go. Merged. Perfect. Okay. And so here's our error. So we're, we're just getting our error in the info, which is good because it means we're getting data. So let's see where we're... So we have this relocating function caused by error relocating. Copy from slice mitch match fail. Section two not found unreferenced by symbol number two. So we're in, I, I can almost guarantee we're in IPv4 up here. And we know that it's this. So we have source adder. And we have dust adder. IPv4, IPv4. So the thing I don't understand is how do I, let's get this, let's get our thing. Where's info? Let me, let me, where's future highway when you need him? He loves when I do this. This is like his favorite thing ever. When I come over here and I click this button. Okay. So I don't know how IBPF info is supposed to look. So I guess the next question is, can I just do this? And can I do settings? Rust bump. Let's turn on my auto font. What do y'all think? There we go. Can I just info the context? Oh, and so this one does unsafe. Let's let's try that. I feel like we would need to get some sort of like, I mean, cause at this point we're basically in the kernel um, with rust and I like, I just like, I, I need to go spend some time and figure out like how to do all the print case and how to like actually print stuff as like hex code and actually examine 
you know, the, the byte code here in, in the kernel at runtime. I don't know how to do any of that yet in Rust, and, and I don't know if now is the time to figure that out. I noticed that I was creating a map for log messages for every eBPF program, says Jay. I haven't used it in anger, but it communicates those messages over a BPF map. Okay, so you, I think what Jay, Jay is saying is we need to go pull off the map in user space, which makes sense. So let's build it and see what we get. We'll throw in an unnecessary unsafe, so it's not a print K, it's a map. I see. I see. We'll let it go. We'll let it ride. Cool. So we're still getting this error relocating function. So let's go look in user space. And then how do we set our in logger? Is there a level? How do you set the log level? I want to set max log level, set logger. I don't want to pass it. I know you can do rest log when you call it at runtime, but I thought there was a way just to hard code it into your code. Here's BPF logger in it. And we pass in mute BPF, BPF program mute. Okay. I want to just, I, I really want to have this like hard code, our logger level. There you go, if log enabled. I don't want to do rust log environmental variable. I know this toggle bit's always like, if you're fighting rust, you're doing it wrong, but I really just want to like hard code it into my code. What the fuck, rust? I can't just do like logger level equals info. Here, y'all get to watch me Google things. Controls the inv logger output. Module declarations take comma separated entries. So you can basically do path to module equals log level. So there's level info. Example log. So Jay sent a link. Let's see. Oh, it says never mind. I thought we did this in Aura, right? Because you can pass dash V into Aura. I think we do this in Aura. I don't know why. 
let's go let's go steal all of our aura code i mean it's our code to steal um so this is in aura d source bin main there's definitely a level here Oh no, we moved the log stuff out to the init stuff, didn't we? Oh, here's logging. Stream logger. Here's logging.rs. What is this? Init. Tracing level. Level trace. And then you pass in tracing level. There's a set max level. Yeah, I saw that earlier. So I can do in logger. Or sorry, it's it's log set max level. And then we can say this is level trace. Right? Let's recompile and see what we get. Oh, good. That looks like it actually... Um... Worked the opposite way that we wanted it to work. I'm just gonna use print lines. Hello, hey Tonsa. How's it going? Fuck this. I am so done. I think we do rust log equals traits. You. I'm gonna get rid of level here and let's see if we can get our infos. Mm. I want to just see this waiting for control C and then I also want to see I want to learn more about what this BPF logger does. There we go. Look at this. We have feature detection. 
Are you trying to set the default logging level? Yes, I am. If you can give me a link, I would love you forever. You have to use the builder method for in blogger. Is there is there a level? Default format, filter level. There's filter. Format. I think we want to do filter level. Yeah, I think we want to do filter level, and this is level trace, and then we do build. What's filter level? Yeah. And then we want to bring in level trace in is and then this is two filter give it a try and see what we get and i'll start to clean up our ebpf code here does hugo take care of the go generation yeah it does Just search for Hugo diagrams. Just Google Hugo diagrams. Cool. So let's let's add some levels in. Uh, info. And then lowercase q always. Cool. <laughs> and I guess we don't need to recompile the eBPF probe. But that's okay. We're compiling user space right now. Just waiting for my code to compile, don't mind me. Yeah, we're just still getting this error function. I think it's because the eBPF probe is like panicking. So let's go to this panic here. And can I do like a print line? Let's try this again. Um, is it it's because this is no main? Why can it not find macro print line? Is it because we have no standard here? How do I... I guess that's fine. EBPF code is hard.
Oh, this says we do filter none, level filter info. So hold on, I just found an example. Uh, this says we do filter none, and then we do level filter uh, trace like this. So this returns a logger. Let's see what our example does here. And then this basically says you call init, I think. Yeah. Like that. I'm sorry, this is a very anticlimactic stream. I'm getting frustrated. I just want to go like figure out where in the kernel to get my code from, not fight with the compiler. But whatever. We're chilling. We knew today was going to be a chill day. Hey, we ha finally, we have stuff. Oh my god. Fucking finally. That should not have taken that long. Okay. So initialize the program, we get our debug detection features, error relocating function. So we get this right away. So we get this after initializing program. And let's do an info. Goat generation? Yeah. Do you usually take notes? If yes, where it's software do you use to make them? I All of my notes are going to ultimately go into my blog. And then I have my own like personal notes I use for like my workspace. But that's just like mostly for me. That's just like most of that stuff is just how to write a for loop in bash. Because I always forget. Just like junk like that. So we're still getting this. It almost would look like our our this probe is is not wanting to play nice for some reason. So if we this is what's fascinating. If we get rid of the infos, if we get rid of the infos, it works. Watch. We'll just get rid of the infos in the in the EBPF probe. That's all we do. I'm gonna use BCC for everything from now on. Fuck this. Fuck Rust. I quit Rust. I'm never going back to Rust ever again. Y'all remember that scene in Billy Madison when he's like, I hate cursive and I hate all of you. I'm never coming back to high school ever again. That's pretty much how I feel right now with computers. I hate computers and I hate all of you. I'm never coming back to computer school ever again. <laughs> <laughs> base plant says gotta go see it later base plant thanks for hanging out see look at this we have all kinds of fucking cool stuff loading ebpf program and waiting for control c so it's just this info fucking thing it's just this info here okay So let's go let's go look at Aya for for other examples here. I mean I guess we could also go and look and see failed to initialize EBPF logger. 
Did we get one of those before? No, we. this is all before the compiler. We basically get this. Error relocating function. And BPF feature detection. So here's the BPF logger. Context. I really want to use this. I just don't know why it's not working. So it's a perf event array, it's a map. Slice into index len fail. So let's 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 do some Googling. We'll say I uh BPF. Is that a, is that, that's not the verifier. Every verifier error I've seen spits out assembly. Spits out bytecode. Let's go see if there's another. Let's go see if there's another way we can implement this logger. Like maybe there's a builder pattern or something. BPF logger. Is there a builder? There's borrow, there's into, there's from, there's init with logger. Type ID. Is our BPF probe the wrong probe? EVPF target debug Q probe. Looks like Aya doesn't understand the elf file. But why why would I guess my question is why does adding the info change that, I guess? I have seen similar errors when in Aura we made eBPF a workspace member. So I, I, I definitely separated eBPF out of the main workspace. And I also am compiling it using the same way we compile it in Aura. I'm not compiling it using the X task, what the fuck ever I said to use. I was like, I just can't condone downloading a dependency to build a program. Like, I just, I can't, I just, no, I'm good. I'm good on that life. Okay, so let's let's go look at how we're compiling this thing. So here's how I'm compiling it. We have BPF elf um, unknown none dash z build standard core, which this is pretty much exactly what we do in Aura. And if you look here, it's its own workspace and its own package. Let's go look at... Do we think it's the fact that we're building from main, maybe? Like, do we want to not build this from main? 
IABPF and just set that to a, let's try that. Let's let's actually get a, a lot. Let's pin it to a version. That seems like a, the right thing to do. IBPF and I log BPF. Let's cargo add I BPF. So there's I a log. Now we have I and I a log, and then we go to our eBPF source code, and we basically change. So that doesn't look like it's right. So we need to figure out how to get IALOG BPF, wherever these packages come from. So, I mean, it's it says IA BPF. Can I say tag? Is it equal to, let's go look and see if we can find tags here. I of V O dot eleven dot O. No macking package named IALOG BPF. It's IA, uh, so it's nested now. I bet they moved this recently. I think they were just using old code. So here's IA BPF. Mm -hmm. Are there branches we could pin it to maybe? You're referencing IA, not IA log in the URL. Yeah, so I mean, like, this is the Git repo, though. So I just assume that Cargo is smart enough to go find IA log BPF the crate, which is just here in the BPF directory. Right? It's just right here. And you can see that there's a, it's a crate, IA log BPF. I don't think you're supposed to put. Right. So 
so we can just go here and we can actually just browse the tag right like we can go to tags see and you can see there's bpf it's not here so let's try a different tag Let's try 10.0 maybe. Here's view all tags. Let's try 10.5 and see what we get. Yeah, they don't, looks like they don't release this. This is not a very good example. I don't feel like we're, I feel like we're doing this the wrong way. I don't feel like we're using Aya the right way. I don't know enough about it to say for certain though. You're referencing Aya, not Aya log in the GitHub. Do you think that? Do you think I, you're, what you're saying is I can basically do tag this and then you say Aya log is where that other one get, gets released? So if we go to the tag v.0.11.0, are you saying we go to. here and then we go to tags and then I log v dot o dot one dot thirteen and you think it's in here bpf I log bpf I see so really we want this tag yes okay very strange why why they did this I don't know but I'm okay with it I don't really care Let's try to compile. Hey, that looks like we're getting new code. That, oh wow, what if this fixes our elf problem? That would be cool, wouldn't it? Because especially because it's a log fucking problem. Look at that. We have a linking error for the first time. Oh, finally, something I understand. <laughs> uh, BPF linker failed. Do, 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 do. Let's. Linking globals named memset, symbol multiply defined, error failure multiplier defined, no embedded bit code, five warnings. Symbols.o, unknown lib. Symbol multiply defined so we're linking and the llvm is doing what the llvm always does in these types of situations it is
Let's go look and see what the IA code says for IA BPF compiling. <clears throat> So the only thing about it is it uses these X task things and I just I I, I just hate this stuff. So they're building with nightly. And this is compile with Clang and libbpf headers. I would feel a lot more comfortable compiling with Clang. Build CEBPF, get libbpf headers. Let's just try to sneak in a nightly and see what we get. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Jay, so this is very strange. Look at what we ended up doing, just so you just like so you know. So the IA logs have their own tags in the IA pro program. We're probably gonna have to do this in Aura, but in order to get IA, so you go to the IA log tag, and then if you go to BPF, you see there's all of these log crates. So this IA log eBPF crate, this one here, only exists in the log tag if you go to the regular tag so if we just go to like the vo 11.0 and we go to the same bpf directory no log no log it's not here so you so what our cargo looks like is um we have for aya bpf we have this tag and for aya log we have that tag and now we're getting a linker error Cool, 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 cute, 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 cute. But IA log tags have both, so you just use IA log for both. Yeah, sure. We let's give it a try. I'll try anything once, so we could try. Maybe that's why it didn't link because the symbol was defined twice because we were using two different versions. We'll see. Hey, that worked. That worked. Who thinks this solved our problem? I bet it did not, but we can try. So we'll say make ebpf install and sudo eq. Hooray. Hooray! I w we need like a more like dun 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 sound. We need more sound effects here in the Nova show. Oh, excuse me. Cool. So the question is, do we have logs enabled? It's working. So let's go look at our source code. We have logs commented out. So we'll turn our logs back on. I Easy, easy, easy. I, d I doubt we're actually instrumenting the kernel yet. I doubt it. We'll see. This is why BCC is so popular, is because you don't have to do any of this shit. It's just, it's all, it's like a DiGiorno pizza. It's already ready already. Don't use Rust, use BCC. That's the takeaway here. Mm -hmm. 
and we're back here. And so, let's go look in IBPF for other examples. So there's IA book. So this is the one we did. We did K probes TCP. Let's do XDP log and see if we can't find. <clears throat> so this one has an X task. So to be clear, this one also had an X task and I took it away. So let's maybe go see what this one looks like. So this was the old eBPF X task. So BPFL unknown none check target dash Z build standard core and then you can add release you could generate an Aya template oh this is cool how do I start this But this uses X task, and I'm, I'm trying hard not to use X task. Does that make sense? Right, and even if you go in here, like, look at the cargo. This is this is this is pretty much what I did already. And I started with a template and removed the X task task. I mean, this is pretty much what we have. I just renamed some of the files, right? OK, yeah. So I was just looking to see if there were missing anything. There's this architecture BPFEL and there's BPFEB. Do we want to try EB and see what we get? I guess. What's BPF? EB. No, it's big Indian. Indian little Indian big. Mm -hmm. Do we need to add anything to the main to read the... No, I doubt it. In run.rs. And this just does the run. Yeah, I just don't want it. X task. So here in this... Th so there was also this cargo, which had... Little Indian, target unknown... That makes sense. And Rust tool chain was nightly, which we have. And this also is in a workspace with no members. Do we want to just do this? I guess we want to turn our... I mean, I would really like to use the loggers, the thing. Like, that's kind of the whole reason we're here. Let's just make sure this works first. Okay. So that worked without the log lines. Let's try it with the log lines. Do you have no standard and no main at the top of your eBPF source file? I do. It's right here.
I'm also running a 6.2 kernel, so who knows what. And now we're back to here again. No alternative logging way? Um, good question. That's kind of what I was hoping to find here in the book. Was like, can we use this package in a different way? Or can we just use good old BPF print K, right? So let's try, here's XDP log. Let's see if there's any print K and D message. I mean, yeah, like, give me an example. Let's do it. I'm here for that D message life. So here is the eBPF probe for this one. So this uses ILOG eBPF info. And you can see here, they're basically, it looks almost identical. And then in the user space component, XDP log, I'm sure they're doing almost the exact same thing. It's gotta be a compiler thing. So the, the other thing to call out, I did remove, there was like a section here where you either turned on debug assertions or not, and it looks like it flipped between debug and release. I just hard-coded debug. Should I just make it release and just always do release? Do we think that that would have anything to do with the symbols? That it has debug symbols in there and it's looking for release symbols or something? Maybe we just compile it as, we compile eBPF as release always. I mean, if, it, if it's adding some weird symbols to it, that would explain why it's like the offset isn't right. So why do we do this? Dash dash release. And then we go to our Q user space and we just basically change this to release. I mean, who knows? We'll give it a try and see what it says. I mean, these are just the only things that I've really changed. This can happen if you remove all log statements from your eBPF program. Let's get a print K in here. How do I do an IABPF print K? I love how I searched for print K and the first thing that came up was BPF print K. It says there's no need <laughs> to use print K, BPF tool prog trace log. Logging is as simple as Fentry kernel clone info return zero and then it's visible in the user space process it uses the perf event array all of this makes sense all of this seems great i love all of this i don't know why it's not working <gasps> that was it you guys that was it it was the fucking release fucking debug symbols nova pants was right We've, we've K-probed TCP connect, finally. We've K-probed TCP connect, finally. The debug symbols, you guys. Jay, you better not forget this. This is a huge one for us in the order. <laughs> nice. Cool, let's save my code. And let's add a big fucking note to this. Okay.
Okay, cool. So we got that. So now, finally, how long did that take? Two hours to fucking fight the compiler? Okay, so let's do this. So program attach TCP connect, and then we'll basically say info What is it? It's Kpro TCP connects. That looks right, doesn't it? That's who 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 knows how the, the K probe syntax and in, in C off the top of their head hand head? It's kprobe double underbar function name, right? I think this is right. Okay, cool. So we'll do TCP connect. Cool, so the, now I can actually write code. Now I actually know what I'm doing here, finally. Jeez, gee, gee golly willikers. So let's go validate this AF inet is six and two. So let's go to Linux 6.2 in the Linux tree. And we're looking for good old AF inet. I think it's in sock.h. I think it's in sock.h. Here. It's app armor make, make file. It's got to be in sock.h. Netlink.c. You know, I'm just gonna go look in the fucking headers. Okay, so include, where is it? Net. Give me this sock.h, socket.h, motherfucker. Is it socket multi is here? <laughs> multi. <laughs> multi, do you know uh that's an include net socket.h, am I right? No, include sys socket dot it's sys socket dot h. No. I'm faster at Googling than you. Um Include it's got to be include net socket dot h. And then it's if it's not, it's in just regular net user API. It's in the user API. Okay. It is v2 net. Um, you're in the v2 net. It's in Linux. Sorry, 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 sorry. Include Linux. Here it is. Socket.h. This is the one. This is it. Sorry, that is the. Here it is, finally. include linux socket.h and then we'll put a link there 
you could be my sysadmin. You're cool, though. Sorry for the troll. Um, with all due respect, you can't afford me. And then six. Okay, let's see. Try EBPF context. And so here we have a probe context. So what I really want to do is So I kind of want to pull this out into, let's have this say try, um, not eBPF, but try socket maybe, try socket common. We'll call it try socket common. And we'll try, try socket common. And then we'll do I'm blown away by all this fancy stuff we just who just see react all day everywhere. Nice. Okay, so we have trisock common and basically here we say where's ret? Okay, Rhett is Rhett, or Rhett trying to... Okay, so I'm not sure if we actually want to return here is the problem. So we do a match on Trisock Common, and it can return a U32 or an I64. So the question is, can I, will I, will we be able to actually get here in the code path? I don't know Rust well enough to understand the implications, or I don't really understand why this is returning an unsigned 32 and a signed uh, 64. Okay, or return an I-64. You save your work. I mean, I, th I just did, but there, saved. It's saved. And so this just returns an unsigned 32. Okay. So what is RT? So basically this is just this is just going in and it's returning an error if that one fails, basically. So we could say this is a K probe called PCP Connect. Actually, we could just call this Q TCP connect. Okay. We're going to borrow our C Q TCP connect. And then this will be try sock common. Okay. So then we go back to our user space program. Okay. And then we basically say this is Q. TCP connect.
I love drawing these lines in my code. I know people who hate this. I, I do it all the time and I love it and I don't give a fuck what anybody says about it. I really don't. Ask me if I care. Ask me if I care. Go ahead. Say, hey, Nova, do you care? And you know what I'm going to say? Nope. Don't care. Don't give a fuck. Hey, Nova, do you care? No, no, Malte. Great question, Malte. Um, so shout out to Malte for asking great questions. Malte wants to know if I care. The answer is no, I don't care. I don't give a fuck. <clears throat> cool. Uh, so we're going to do QTCP connect. So now, finally, we're at the... <laughs> Actually, I'll delete this. We are finally to do new paper at the point where we want to do um some introspection in the kernel. Okay. So we do the binding here. So basically we bind QTCP connect to TCP connect program attach the function name offset zero okay and we'll bind this to k probe um, tcp connect okay so let's go look in the kernel um let me save my work and let's run it and then we're going to go look in the kernel for a bit. Um, so what is it? It's make ebpf install and sudo eq. Let's make sure this works. I changed all the function names and everything. I don't know if it'll actually compile. Hopefully I, I, I did it right. We'll see. It looks like it's fine. It should have aired by now. Oh, so Lookner streaming. What is Lookner streaming about? I didn't get a notification in Discord. Did, has anybody looked in Discord? What is Lookner streaming about? Let's see. Silicon ba Valley Bank Collabs Government Action. Breaking news. <laughs> Breaking news. <laughs> Silicon Valley Bank Collapsed. Government action. Do you want to check out Lookner really quick? Or do you want to look in the kernel? Oh my god, these are like my two favorite things in the world. <laughs> ah, what do we do? Okay, so this is this is basically... Um, we're instrumenting basically like... A, you can get this from like a million different tools. This is nothing new. Um, way too much exciting. um so we can let's keep moving forward so here's the linux kernel but we're gonna pull it up on my end we're gonna open linux in my ide and i believe we're checked out to linux let's see git branch it should be v62 okay so we're on the 62 tag here linux so we know we're going to look in the kernel code again. So where do we want to instrument? So we want to instrument include net. Where's net? We had looked, we had looked at this yesterday. So it's inet connection sock.h. Here is the request sock queue. And we had actually, we had looked in the, it was, I think it was user API. So we had looked in Linux net IPv4, here it is, here it is. This is the code. This is the kernel code here. Inet connection sock dot C. Here we go. 
<clears throat> so we want to look for except Q. And there is a, what is it, Alt 3? Here we go. This is why I like this IDE. These are all the functions over here on the left. So CSK stands for connection socket. INET is IPv4. SYNAC recalc is what's calculating the checksum or the TCP handshake. We're looking for IPv4 receive source adder, bind conflict, bind hash, get port, except we're getting closer, init, transmit, clear, reset, route, route child, route child sock, request socket queue drop, request socket queue migrated, request socket queue clone. Request socket queue unlink. Inet connection socket and listen. Here we go, we're getting closer. Connection socket listen adder to socket adder. Q add. Request socket queue add. Export symbol. Oh, why is this exported? Let's go here. So that's how you add something to the queue. And it's a hash bucket. Find an open port for the socket returns with the hash bucket. Okay, th this is not necessarily what we're... Oh, this is find port. So let's... Before we... Before... Let's let's actually come up with a plan. Hold on. I'm I, As I'm thinking through this, I'm realizing I, I don't have a plan in my brain yet. It's time for ASCII diagramming. Okay. So the question is... Let's clear all this. The question is, okay, we have a queue known as the accept queue. I'm trying to think how do I, let's, let's start with text. So we have the accept queue. We know this is a first in, first out. I think I wanted to start. There we go. And we'll put it here. There. And we know we're going to have, let's find, we're going to have a function that can add to the queue here. And we're going to copy that. And we know that we have a function that will take away from the queue here. We need to figure out the name of this function and the name of this function for a TCP. Uh, IPv4 uh, TCP IP. You got to go TCP IPv4 goes there. And then I guess just because Malte's on the stream, he's going to have a fucking heart attack if I don't code in IPv6. <laughs> Literally this guy, like every time we're working together, uh, I just, I feel like any opportunity he has to be like, oh, I am from the Germany and uh, IPv6, please. And I love him because let's be real. America is the laziest country in the world. And we will, it's going to be two, it's going to be 20, you're, you're 2100. I'll be dead. In America, I, I want somebody on in the year 2100 to like go like have some like advanced searching algorithm where they can find these videos and come back and watch this moment right now. In 2100, America will still be on IPv4. I'm calling it now. Fucking called it. Come back and watch this video and and and, and watch it in your because like I'm assuming there's going to be like some chat GPT something that can just go and like look this up and it'll be hilarious. As long as that works, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay, so we'll do TCP IPv4. We're also we need uh, the Unix domain. 
Um, what else do we want? I think that was it. And I guess for now... We'll just start here. Okay, so we need to figure out the name of this function. So let's go look in the kernel. We have tcp.c UDP Put it up here. Put him down there for now. Okay, sure it is. Um, so back to our code. So let's go to we know if we look in include our headers. So let's start at the headers. So we'll go to include net um where was it? Inet connection sock dot h so we have this request sock queue, which we know lives in request down here, request sock.h. And here they are. Here's the sock queue definitions. Okay. So this is this is what we want right here. For every TCP fast open listener, we want to know the queue len. When Connection. Actually, I'm going to write this down. I'm going to fucking go write this down. We're going to emacs source chrisnova.net content post linux accept queues.md and we will go all the way down to the bottom. Observe accept queues. And I'm just going to. Oh, hold on. Let me update. We have some changes. We'll rebase. Uh, so we'll say we want this. Um, Emacs, get ignore. We have a conflict. Um, okay, so then we want to emacs content post Linux accept queues and let's see. There we go. Okay, cool. So let's see what we had here. You first want to understand which specific keys you want to be interested in serving. Sorry, I'm just doing work here, y'all. Don't mind me. Okay. Um, four types of connections that uh most enterprise uh services 
will find interesting. Um, so we are interested in, what did I say? Let's go to ASCII flow. I just said it a second ago. We want to find where in the kernel a connection is added to the queue and we want to instrument where in the kernel a connection is removed from a queue. Connectionless connections looks a bit weird. That's how we that's how connectionless connections is how I built bootkit. Y'all remember bootkit? So when I built bootkit, um, which if you're interested, here is bootkit. Um I can root your server with a single send packet. And we what we do is we embed a an RCE payload here in the data block of an IP frame or an IP um, uh, packet, and I basically can deliberately malform the packet um, and pop a shell on your server and, and get a remote a remote shell. But I do all this using raw TCP sockets. If you look. Um, here in the client, here's how you basically initialize it. I think I think I don't think I do sock stream. I do do sock stream here. I thought I did sock raw somewhere. Yeah, here it is. Um, bad checksum sock raw connectionless. Then the TCP pad checksum to any TCP socket, regardless if a server is running, the kernel will still trigger a bad TCP checksum event. And then you do a sock raw here. Anyway, I digress. Okay, so specifically, we are interested in looking at in the fast open queue. No, that's pretty cool, but I meant the description of UDP. Oh yeah, I mean UDP is also pretty cool as long as you um as long as you get it. Okay, so Emacs, so let's, um, in the Q lane. Mem uh, the Q laying. This is a struct field or a struct member. What do you, what do you call an entry in a struct in C? Is it a struct? They're called fields in Go. Each field with, within a struct. Yeah, it's called a field. Okay. All right. So we'll say in the Q len field.
in the fast open queue struct. Request sock.h. This is include, yeah, this is uh, in include net request sock. H. Okay. Did we get raiders? No, I don't think so. Thank you for the follow, everyone. Welcome to the Nova Show. I'm your host, Chris Nova. Welcome to the show. Here at the Nova Show, we do what I want when I want because it's my fucking show. Today on the Nova Show, we are looking at the kernel with some K-probes. So let's go find when we call TCP fast open listen in the kernel. So we'll actually write a little note above it. So this is text. TCP fast open listen. And this is TCP fast open accept. That's what we're looking for. Um, I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be back in about two or three minutes. I take really quick breaks. So we'll see everyone in just a second. So sit tight. We'll see you in a moment and we'll look through the kernel code.
Okay, and we're back. I told you that would be quick. Y'all didn't believe me. And we're back. We're back. Welcome in. We're going to go look for TCP Fast Open now. We're going to go look for TCP Fast Open. Hey, Roberto Dev. Welcome back in. Welcome back. Okay, so. Let's go spelunking into the bowels of the kernel. So IPV, we'll start with IPv4 because we know we can replicate that locally. So we want TCP. Look at, I wonder where TCP fast open can be found. We have TCP fast open. This includes kernel.h, tcp.h, rc update, and net tcp.h. Okay. Context free. If we didn't believe you, we would have been we would have pissed off. So we did TCP connect earlier. So I'm wondering if we go to tcp.c if there is Description of states. Oh, God, I'm looking at this file again. All right, hold on. We're going to have to do the thing. So close that and open that. So we looked for TCP connect. That's what we have instrumented now, which we, we think that's in here. Here's compute. Here's disconnect. TCP I octal, TCP pull, where's listen? Why is TCP connected here? I guess it's probably, there's probably a different closed structure. Open this. There's TCP BPF. There's TCP IPv4.c. Does this have TCP connect in it? I'll take it. Uh, why can I not do the lookup? Do I need to like figure out how to get my code to like index this thing i don't even know we'll go back so we're in the kernel implementation in net ipv4 tcp.c is there con.c maybe let's there's afinet.c let's just do this let's control r TCP connect TCP output dot C why in the fuck why is TCP um so I don't have a today command but hello and welcome to the Nova show I'm your host Chris Nova welcome to the show here at the Nova show we do what I want when I want because it's my fucking show today on the Nova show we are looking at K probes in rust we're trying to measure these things called accept queues in Linux I'm working on a blog that goes into all the detail around what an accept queue is, why they exist, why you would want to look at one in the first place. It is no notably and notoriously one of the few places in the kernel we don't have visibility into. And from a performance perspective, these are exciting to uh, folks who are operating large production web services, which I tend to do from time to time. So anyway, that's the show. Welcome in. And to, right now we're looking in the kernel source code to try to figure out which function we want to instrument. Hopefully that made sense. If you have any clarification, feel free to ask in the uh, chat. Check one. There we go. It came back. Um, myself and others can help in and uh, help you understand as we move forward. Um, probably others will, will be better at answering if you have any questions. So we are instrumenting this, uh, function today and notice that it takes a sock. So we have TCP con. So this is when our kernel builds a TCP send and sends it off. 
build and send a send with data and cached fast open cookie. There might be some actually interesting functions in here. Let's go, let's read this really quick. Let's go start at the tippy tippy top. Oh, this is huge though. This is huge. An implementation of the TCP IHP protocol suite for the Linux operating system. BST socket interface and means of communication with the user level. Fascinating. Right transmit. So this is the TCP. I this is this is the implementation. Who would have thought that TCP output of all files is where TCP connect? I mean, it makes sense because you're going out. But let's look at TCP input. TCP enter quick act mode. Send acts quickly if quick count is not exhausted. Here we go. ECN. What is ECN? Connection. It's got to be entry connection. Maybe let's do, let's look. TCP ECN. Explicit congestion notification. Oh, huh, today I had no idea. Today I learned. ECN, the explicit connection notification, is an extension of the IP TCP suite. It is defined in RFC 3168 from 2001. ECN allows end-to-end -end notification of network congestion without dropping packets. Without dropping packets. ECN is an optional feature that must be used between two ECN enabled. Buffer size and advertised window tuning. TCP sock grow window. Application buffer. No. So let's just let's grab for listen. Here's TCP listen, TCP close, receive state process. So probably somewhere down here. I mean, this is the TCP handshake here. TCP four. Got to drop here, folks. And should be address independent. So this feel, I feel like this receive state process. We get a TCP socket. We have an INET connection sock. We have a request sock, which knows that it's queued. We have TCP close because it basically switches on the socket state. And if it's in TCP listen, we we set the TCP header to ACK and we return one. Oh, if it's in ACK, we return one. If it's in reset, we do a reset. If it's SIN and fin otherwise we do a consume socket and we pass it off to accept so this is if we're in kate tcp listen send sent requests if th step five check the act field if not acceptable retransmit here we go what does this comment say send act delivery isn't tracked in the tcp act Note that it would wake up only for marginal sin calls, blah, 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 blah. And fin wait, we're almost done with the handshake. Closing last act, blah, blah, blah. Check the urgent bit segment. And then there should be some checksum at the very end here. If queued, if not queued. Okay, free socket buffer. Okay. Okay, so let's scroll up this. This looks pretty exciting. So let's think about this. So we know a send packet comes in, which is that's what happens on listen. A send packet comes in and then we know that that's when it gets queued. So if ACK is set, return one. So it's not here. So it's really this code path. This is this is where we are. So this consume 
So basically it'll lock. Let me see what this comment says. That we process in packets from backlog. So we need to make sure that disable BH and RCU right there. Okay. What is con request? Consume socket buffer. What is backlog here from backlog? Backlog. So this is the thing is, is the accept queue is often known as the backlog queue, depending on who wrote the code. Welcome to the kernel. Some people, I think Torvalds refers to it as the backlog queue. I think other offers refer to it as ex the accept queue. Nginx calls it backlog queue. I call it the accept queue because I want to be accepting of everyone in the world. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> This consumed socket buffer, I suspect, is where we go. So th this one is exciting. Let's go write this down. Why did, I don't know why it does that. That's very strange. TCP receive state process. I'll just type it. And this is in TCP input. That's that could be one. Let's keep scrolling. This is the ECN. Stable negotiation. TCP send flood action. This is the fast open implementation. Request socket record sin. If a sin cookie is required, this is all the fast open work. All right, let's scroll up. Uh, open rec init request sock. So this is creating a new request socket. Act ECN end F. Yeah, that's a new request socket init. Drop request. Is this the receive request state we saw earlier? Yeah. And state fast open. What is this? Sometimes I'll read from the top down or the bottom up just to like help my brain remember it. This is TCP receive send sent state process. If state is sent, sent, then first we check the ACK bit. Now ACK is acceptable. Okay. Here, TCP fast open add socket buffer. What the fuck? That looks right. Receive fast open sin ACK. Finish connect. Getting closer. TCP inet transfer. Congestion window. Receive established. So TCP receive function for the established state. So that's that. That's called after accept. This might be the one we want to get for. Um, we're probably going to want to instrument TCP receive established. 
for the the end of the queue now the question is is there a tcp receive established for fast open or not welcome we got raided welcome to the show raiders welcome in hey frank how was your stream what were you streaming about Welcome into the Nova Show. I'm your host, Chris Nova. Welcome to the show. Here at the Nova Show, we do what I want when I want because it's my fucking show. Except reset. Today at the Nova Show, we're looking at Rust. Well, actually, literally, right now we're looking at C. Um, but we're trying to write some Rust for the kernel. Um, specifically, we are looking at TCP input.c in the Linux implementation code for kernel 6.2. And we are trying to find, here's prune queue. We're trying to find some of the functions here that will be mutating the accept queues. So one of the things we can actually grep for in this case is just accept queue. There's two instances in this whole file. So there's the sin flood action if a sin cookie has been sent. And then there's this function here, which is receive sin sent state process, which we read earlier. So let's go back to our diagram. So we need to find where the, where the queue actually starts. So let's, so we know we call listen and then we know we get into the IP stack and then we, is where you kind of lose me. So let's go look over here. So we have TCP ACK. We have TCP con request. We have a TCP con request. Do we think TCP con request fast open socket, open sin act, fast open? Do we think this is the function that is executed when we pull a connection off the wire? That's the question here. TCP con request. Do we think this is the entry point? Let's go see. I'm curious. Let's look more about TCP fast open really quick. Hold on. Like we know how it works. How do we check and we see if it's enabled? Here we go. That's enabled. So we are using TCP fast open. That's what you, that's what I thought. Okay. So that's good. Sorry, I'm reading in the other field really quick. Uh, 
go. There's TCP con request here. I think this is the entry point, folks. I think we found our file. I think, I think I'm reading this, this dude's like comment here and I'm going to go validate it in the code in just a second. I'll tell you my theory. Hi, Nat. Connection socket. Accept. INET connection socket accept. What file is this in? And then there's INET connection socket. Um Accept, clear, reset, route, let's see. There's listen, start. Request queue allocate. Okay, what file is this in? This, this is right. This is where we want to be. Okay. So the other code is basically it's it's the it's that's layer two where we want to be in layer one, which is here where we are. Or sorry, layer three, which is here where we are. Um, so let's remove that, and we are in inet connection sock.c. Okay, so we do listen start. So let's go write this down. Inet connection sock listen start is where we. We allocate the queue. And then we believe, let's go write this down. Uh, I just want like a quick notepad. Let's, let's do this. Emacs content, um, posts, Linux accept queues.md and page down. Okay, so listen start is, we believe, we'll grab our this, which is in um, inet connection sock.c, which so that's going to be in net ipv4 inet connection sock.c. Let's make sure that's right. Net. Okay. Then we will say connection received. I before E except after C. Nova can figure out where IPv4 connection sockets are received just by reading the kernel code. Also Nova can't spell the word received. Um, okay, so that's connection received. So we believe this one though, this is remember because connection received has happens lower in the network stack, right? Think about it. Um, we we have to have a connection before we can build all the, the abstraction around the connection. Right? So we don't even know about all these queues and everything else until we, we get to it. So that's IP input, right? It's where it's coming in. It's coming in off the fucking wire. It's the input to the stack. It makes sense. Okay, so we believe this one is, what do we call this? It was the receive, I wrote it in my ASCII flow. TCP receives state, no, that wasn't what it was. It was. Con request.
Where was TCP con request? Was that not in IP? Oh, TCP input. Sorry, not IP input. I was like, why? Here it is, TCP con request. So we basically believe this is where the send packet is processed and that it, based off of reading the code, this makes sense. So we believe TCP con request Let's get the whole function uh, signature. What do you think? Uh, that's too big. We'll say dot dot dot. Um, and this is in the implementation code. So this is in slash net IPv4 slash ECP input dot C. Okay. And then we think except uh, except connection. We believe this is in. This is just for IPv4. Remember this. The except connection we believe is in inet connection socket except which we believe is in, we can search for it. Let's see if I can get it right. Let's see if I can remember. It was inet connection socket except would have been in. Here, it's in inet connection socket.c. This is all the inet connection socket. So we basically do inet connection socket except and there it is. Got it. Good. Okay. This is this will accept the next outstanding connection. So we believe we can copy this whole function signature and we will put it here. So this is accept connection kern, and we believe this is in net IPv4 slash inet connection sock dot C. There you go. Those are our three points. And then we'll build a table there and get saved. Okay, I'm gonna go look at the chat. I haven't seen any, I haven't been reading the chat, sorry. Um, there's some good stuff in TCP listen to tale of two cues. As someone who has cut his teeth on C and C++, I'm having bad flashbacks, says Brad. Br are you the Brad Wilson? The Brad Wilson I used to work with? I hope you are. If so, I love you and I miss you and I wanna give you a hug and hang out with you in the sunshine in Denver in shorts. And if not, and that was really weird, then I'm really sorry. But if it is, I'm really happy. I am indeed. Yay! <laughs> Fuck yeah! Hi, Brad. It's good to see you. How's life? I, I hope you're doing okay. Looks like we both made it out of the big house around the same time. How's life on the outside? Loving retirement so far. Fuck yeah! I, I, I suspect you're still hanging out with like the original gang um, with Thomas and everyone. If you get a chance to sell, tell them I said hi and that I love them, that'd be great. I also, I bet if um, if we're lucky, I bet Preston is here in the chat too. Cool. So let's see what we have here. Basically, we will do our struct sock here and we have, but I definitely still talk to a bunch of X hubbers and a bunch of X softies. Nice. Well, all of you lucky ones who actually 
were able to work post acquisition and get your stock. I'm very envious of you. I'm going to be unfortunately stuck in economic servitude for the rest of my life because I have opinions and I am a trans person, but that's okay. Anyway, um, we can say ASCII flow will close this because capitalism. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's instrument some code. So we found our points in the kernel. Let's get our blog cleaned up and push our, well, let's, 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 let's instrument it first. Okay. So we'll go to open queue. And where's our EBPF? Main. We'll put a big comment here. And so let's go cat content posts Linux accept queues. Uh, areas to instrument, we will say, let's actually do this. Uh, TCP connect. Um, we actually can get rid of this one. This is outbound. Uh, INET suck listen start. This is inbound. We also want to do TCP con request. This is inbound. And we also want to do inet connection socket accept inbound. So this is basically going to be listen. This is going to be a uh, new connection received. Uh, TCP is layer two. No, layer three. TCP is layer three. Right? What? TCP. Should be layer three no they're layer four and then ip is layer three no ip is layer five no that seems wrong while well, ip is at layer three okay so ip is layer three multi says four thanks multi To Ethernet. Thank you, Malte. That's what I needed. Malte has been working in tap devices recently. He's like, we're here for that layer two. <laughs> Just give me that MAC address and leave me alone. So INET is IP, so that's layer three. And so this is listen, this is accept. Layer three. My C C plus plus days were working on TCP IP and P triple POE or, or PPP stacks. Which ones? Uh, if you only had my second screen, there are trigger words which make me look at your stream. I, f I feel you. PPP equals dial up. Yeah, I hear you. Okay, so I think this is. This is where we are. Whoa. 
Um, and then so we can say all of the implementation of this code can be found in uh, net IPv4 um, slash star dot C most uh, of the TCP IP stack uh, or we'll say most of the um, do 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 uh, layer 3 IP code is in net IPv4 inet connection sock.c the um Layer 4 connection code is in net IPv4. Um, cool. There we go. So now we know what we want to instrument. And so we will basically, we're going to copy this whole thing. TCP connect will say example kpro to be removed or uncalled by Q uh, useful for quickly debugging the eBPF probe uh, functionality as this is in outbound uh, TCP connection from the local kernel host kernel okay I know there's a typo I'm gonna fix it okay quick is based on UDP but if everything would have been clearly designed it would replace UDP so it's layer 4 but also not layer 4 where we're going we don't need the OSI reference model nice what is the future of quick Awesome. So we'll take this whole one and let's now go instrument. Do, do, do. We let's do a, an exciting one first. Let's do let's do TCP con request first. And con request takes, didn't I hope I copied all of these in? Of course, we have a lot to do here. So let's at source Linux um, net IPv4 TCP input dot C pipe to Emacs. No, head. No, less. Less is more. Uh, and then we're looking for oh, TCP con R. Here we go. There we go. Malte says hard to say. Also, Malte meet Brad. Brad meet Malte. Brad and I work together at the grid of Send and the O of Twilly. And Malte and I work together on the Aura Runtime Project. And um, y'all are both badass people and remind me a lot of each other, except for like Brad is pretty much the American version of Malte and Malte is pretty much the German version of Brad, except for Brad has a, a badass beard, which you would expect on the German, but it's actually reverse anyway. Um, y'all are both cool people. Or in my case, the early 70s. There you go. Okay, so we have this and here's what our um we'll say try sock common 
um, TCP, we'll say try TCP on request, and we'll paste that there. That's our method signature, which is fine. And then we want this to be try. TCP connect. Uh, con request. And here we go. And so we get a probe context. And so now we're going to basically, we'll get rid of this whole switch here. And let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So first things first, we'll need to do arg zero is, is going to be this. Have y'all ever looked into the implementation of how K probes work? This is this is one of my favorite features of BPF, and I feel like we don't talk about it enough as a as an industry. Um, Slay girl says thirty. White rabbit. Hello, Chris. What did GitHub engineers think about GitHub Copilot? Do they use their product? Um. Not going to answer that question for a few reasons. Number one, I'm not at work and I don't want to work right now because it's the weekend and I have to go to work on Monday and that's bad enough as it is. So ask me again on Monday and I'm happy to talk about work then. Number two, I'm not going to comment on Copilot. That's a loaded question and like I, I just work for the company. I'm not I'm not a, a PR person or at all. In fact, I deliberately um, decided not to be in that position anymore and just went back to regular old engineering. Number three, the, the general sentiment that any group of people agree and have a, a common opinion on any topic at all is completely fucking absurd. Even if there was two people at GitHub, which there are thousands, but even if there was two people at GitHub, the likelihood that they both share the same opinion on a topic is pretty fucking slim. So that question is like, I don't want to call bad questions out, but that's that's a loaded question and I hope that you know so and I'm not going to answer it next question I tried to be like Barack Obama with that answer I'm not as good as him I feel like if I was more Barack I would be like great question let's unpack that a little bit right but yeah I'm just it's just not a thing I'm gonna get into right now mm -hmm. One font makes you bigger, and one font makes you small. Cool. So this is what we need to do. Cool. So this is request socket op, address family op, and I think we can actually just do sock and socket buffer again. So let's let's just try this. So we'll say sock is equal to arg two. Let's socket common. And then we can we can likely do we can probably just keep this whole thing again. I also feel like this is we're, this is not actually measuring the lengths of the queues. This is just around the queue, which we can get most of this already from like TCP dump if we really wanted to. But this is this is still a good starting point to just have this plumbing available. Mm. So let's let's try to get this built in. QCon request. So where is our source main?
So this is QCon. What is it? It's QCon request, right? Yeah. K probe TCP con request. Q TCP con request. Q TCP con request. So the question here is is the k-probe plumbing and the bpf helper smart enough where you don't actually have to give it like the path of the function you can just give it the function name that's how sections work in the rest of ebpf i i assume it's the same here who thinks it's gonna work who thinks it's gonna work make ebpf install and sudo eq Who thinks my code is going to compile and my research will be fruitful? Let's see. I also think it sounds like Q is about to come walk into the room, which is funny because we're literally compiling a program called Q right now. Maybe not. Maybe she's not going to come in. We'll see. It looks like it might work. I mean, it's going to compile. Whether or not it's actually going to give us the data we're looking for is a different... different. So the, the real thing here is if that, that experiment we ran where we have the dis defective server, if we can get this to echo out output, even though the server hasn't responded, that's really going to be what we're looking for here. That's really going to be what we're looking for here. And it looks like it works. Okay, so we're getting stuff on IPv6, so let's... Let's do our thing. So let's go to... go to Q. Uh, source queue and we will sudo e servers uh, dysfunctional listen not accept TCP oh uh, change directory to servers is it not oh let me compile my bad so these are all of the bad servers I wrote okay so sudo e dysfunctional listen not accept tcp exact there it is okay so a third one we should be able to curl localhost on 9074 and we should see an ipv4 in here okay so i have another one here so we're going to do curl localhost on 9074 and we're going to do silent v and it should hang and this is the thing is is it should fucking hang because our server never calls accept but we should still see a log record this is the whole two the whole weekend's worth of work is for this moment to see if this this basic exercise will work and it did wow wow cool i mean i don't have a reason why it wouldn't work and it doesn't even seem like it would be that exciting it's just the linux networking stack it's not that cool um but yeah we've demonstrated and look curl is hanging in fact i'm gonna grab a screenshot of this i gotta show the guys um Um, so we basically have instrumented the kernel where we can see at no point did I think that was going to work. I had complete faith, <laughs> lol. Um, so we can at least see when connections come in. So I'll add a note to our eBPF probe. QTCP con requests. Cool. Uh, it will say uh, research confirm that this K probe will be will execute when a client sends a HTTP request to a server 
that called listen but has not yet accepted a request this is the entry point for all new inbound connections coming off the wire of uh, coming off the wire and so where's the kernel diagram um, It's net device, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. so there's my notes there. And we'll save this work. Hit save. And I can do the rest of this later. Okay. Um, that's it. That's our whole research exercise. We've proven the theory. Um, now it's just a matter of, of continuing to work through the code and, and doing some more performance and cleaning the code up and stuff. But that that is basically the the main I told you guys, it was that one curl request. It was the whole this whole weekend was for that one curl request. <laughs> Um, I know it's very anticlimactic, but yeah, that was, that was really all I was looking for, um, was just getting to the point where I could actually prove that we were able to, you know, instrument it with eBPF. And so K-Probe was, was the, we, we were looking at tracing yesterday, but K-Probe was the, the right, uh, approach to, to get this information out of the kernel. Um, so anyway, we, we have definitely been able to prove what we were looking for. Um, I'll probably keep working on this project queue and like making it a little more meaningful and I'll finish up my blog and everything and I'll share it with folks whenever I get done. Um, I'm going to get out of here. I think, I think I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to go see my beautiful partner and go play with my puppy and go have family time. Uh, so I love you all. It's been a great stream. Brad, it's good to see you again. Don't be a stranger. Go come say hi in our discord, Brad. We'd love to talk to you. Madeline is here. Shout out to Madeline. Madeline, I'm so proud of you. How do we give her? She's like my best friend. Y'all don't even know. Madeline is like, we both like nature and the Pacific Northwest. We're pretty much like BFFs. Stop your mind. <laughs> um, no, it's it's really great. Madeline says I'm so proud of you. Aw, thank you. I don't know why, but I feel like I want to get better at friends in the uh, world. Just like being super supportive of each other like there's nothing wrong with like a friend just being like really fucking like like just total soccer mom mode like i am so proud of you here is an orange slice and you have worked so hard and we're gonna stop and get pizza and ice cream on the way home tonight because you have just done amazing <laughs> um i think that that is a uh some of the best friends i have in this world do do that for me they'll be like we are you did good on your kernel we're gonna have special um movie time tonight you're gonna get to eat the mochi ice cream from the freezer and i cannot hear q saying that to me for after i get done for the day anyway um feel free to uh follow along on mastodon follow along i'm gonna be like my blog i'll continue to put my research in my blog as i move forward there'll be a lot of research that goes into that thing so just um you know hang out um we're gonna raid who are we gonna raid who do we want to raid? Um, Lookner is streaming, but we can't raid Lookner. They get mad at us. We can raid Karen Day. I don't see anyone else, really. Um, Who else do we want to raid? There's Computer, Bike Curious. Do we want to, do y'all want to watch Bike Curious ride his bike around San Francisco? That's always a fun one. Um, We can raid Bob Ross. Thank you. We learned a lot. That sounds interesting. We'll raid Bike Curious. How's that sound? Cool. I'm out of here. Thanks, everyone. It's been real. Um.
um thank you so much for your time and we will see everybody next time have a good one i love you all and thanks for uh the follow everyone we'll see you next time